God bless you. May God increase you. May God continue to release more, more, and more anointing upon your life. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Can we just wave to the Lord one minute? We thank God for your presence. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for honoring us this morning with your presence. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you've come to visit us, O God, that you've come to minister to us, O God Almighty. We surrender our lives unto you, my Father, Lord, this morning, my Father. We come before your presence, my God. We thank you, Lord, that you dwell in the praises of your children, my Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, you are here, O God Almighty, my Father, my God in heaven, to touch our lives. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you honor. Father, thank you for the, uh, for the session of praise and worship. We thank you, Lord, for, uh, for the way, Lord, you have touched our lives, O God. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the ministration of your angels that are here to minister to us, O God. Father, Lord, I just want to surrender my life unto you. My Father, Lord, even as we share the word, it is not about me, my Father. It is about you, Lord God Almighty. And I pray, Lord, that you may take the stage, O oh Lord. Take the stage, Holy Spirit of God. Have preeminence today. Let Jesus Christ be exalted. Let Jesus Christ be glorified in this place. Let Jesus be revealed in this place. It is about you, Jesus. We honor you. We give you praise. My Father, Lord God Almighty, I'm just a vessel, nothing more. I pray, my God in heaven, that you may continue to sanctify me, Lord, as a vessel ready for the master's noble use, my Father, Lord. May your word that comes forth, my Father, may it come forth with clarity, my Father. May your word, my Father, God Almighty, not return to you void. Let it accomplish what you've purposed for us this day. We thank you, my Father, the Lord, as you take your stage my father we humble ourselves before your feet to hear from you my father my god in heaven thank you holy spirit of god thank you jesus that you are here with us oh lord father we commit our sunday school before you our children as they go to their class or the teens the sunday school as they go for their class my father we want to commit them unto your able hands king of glory that even as we sh as we share the word today lord they shall be they shall partake oh god double portion oh my father of your anointing of your grace of your power of your spirit oh god we pray for the sunday school and the teen teachers my father even as they minister to the young people my father may you anoint them, my Father, Lord God Almighty. Give them the knowledge, my Father, to break your word, my Father. Precept as a, after precept, O oh God, in a manner that is, O oh God, that is digestible, in a manner that is comprehensible, that our children can understand, my Father, that is a future, O oh God, future church of tomorrow. Father, we bless you and we worship you as we sit at your feet, my Father, have preeminence. May your Holy Spirit have preeminence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Wana sifiwe. Let's give God another mighty hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Without spending much time, I would want us to go to the word of God. Uh, but even before going to the word of God, I, um, I just want to thank God for his faithfulness. I want to thank God for what he's doing in our midst. Um, yesterday we had a very wonderful very glorious wedding here and we were blessed and uh just want to thank god that we came to witness our pastor as he was officiating the first wedding bonus if you were, can we clap for the lord hiya bonus if you were, let's clap for the lord yes it is a glorious thing it is a wonderful thing that the lord is doing in our midst and we just want to thank you, thank the Lord for the great and mighty things that he's doing. And he's taking us places and he's lifting us from glory to glory. Yeah, it was a wonderful time. And um, just to share, before I go to the word, that um, it was a glorious day. We had so many, 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 many guests. This place was packed to capacity and overflowing. And um, I think at one time, the ushers were overwhelmed. Mama Njeri and our brother uh, Oyo, they were overwhelmed because they, we fetched all the seats that we had Sunday school. Because the place was overflowing up to the end. And I know at times we are called. Because uh, I think even mom, I, I was seated, but mama likuja kasimama. You know, as a mother, 
akakuja mahali tu kasimama you know when mom bends like this akikuja kwenye akiwaambia hey that means what are you doing bwana asifiwe and i remember when we were growing up when my, the way my mother brought us up that when visitors come kuna vile atakukondolea macho ama kuna vile atakuangalia bwana asifiwe kukuambia what are you doing seated when the visitors are here bwana asifiwe so i took up the role of asha because the ushers were very overwhelmed and let me tell you this as a testimony that um, the lord is marking us for increase bwana asifiwe for those who are here yesterday and i want you to attest to this that the lord is marking this church for increase and overflow bwana asifiwe and the lord is marking us for revival bwana asifiwe it is a sign it is a mark and i do not we do not want to take it for granted and i know and uh, uh, yesterday i respected ushers because when i was ushering i know it is not easy it is not easy and the lord was reminding us as we prepare for revival as we prepare for this overflow and over or, or an increase are we ready bwana asifiwe are we ready for an increase are we ready for an overflow we need to ask ourselves because the lord is moving whether you like it or not the lord is moving and the lord has marked this church for revival bwana asifiwe and the lord is doing great and glorious things and we want to thank god, thank god for that bwana asifiwe so can we go to the word of god briefly and i want uh, to share the word within the one hour i've been given please i i ask you by the grace of god um be still i've been given only an hour so i'll try to to be disciplined by the help of the holy spirit to stick to that one hour bwana asifiwe so i urge you please be still so that you can hear what the lord has for us that no one is no one misses a word that is for the season bwana asifiwe let us turn to the uh, to the word of god in first kings chapter 17 first kings chapter 17 from verse 1 I'll read up to verse uh, 16. Are we there? Let me hear an hallelujah or an amen. We are there. So I shall read. Uh, let us read. Um, first, first, first Kings. be able to project my voice. When I see you, so we shall read. May the Holy Spirit guide us and give us interpretation and revelation knowledge as we read. First King chapter 17, uh, from verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, excuse me. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook of Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that, they, that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook of Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The raven, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there, and see, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he rose and went to Saravath, 
And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me and afterward make some for yourself and your son. Verse 14, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Verse 15, so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she had, and uh, she and he and her household ate for many, many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. Wanasifiwe. Um, just a, a little background. Let me just give a, a, li a little background, a brief ba background to that text that we have read. And um, Prophet Elijah um, comes into the scene during the reign of King Ahab. King Ahab reigned over Israel in Samaria for about 22 years. And during the reign of King Ahab in Zamaria, he did what was evil before the sight of God. More than what, more than even the, the other, his predecessors, the other kings did. He's one of the kings that did evil in the sight of God. When I see fewer. And in such a way that um, one, he married Jezebel. He married a woman from the heathen nation a woman called Jezebel. And secondly, he built an altar to Baal. And he constructed a temple for Baal so that they would worship Baal. And what the, the king did is that in his reign, people now started worshiping idols. They started worshiping Baal. And it is during his reign it was during the reign of Ahab the, that evil increased. Idol worship increased to an, to an extent, to a level that it paved way for one person in that nation. He did the worst of the worst evils. What that man did is that he rebuilt the city of Jericho during that reign of Ahab. He rebuilt the city of Jericho. And if we, are able, if we are able to remember the history of Joshua, when Joshua and the children of Israel, by God's grace, they demolished the walls and the cities of Jerusalem. What Joshua did, he cast the city of Jerusalem. And this is what he said. We'll not go there, but I'll just read what Joshua, the cast that Joshua said over the, the, the city of Jerusalem. That is in Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. You can go read later. Joshua 6, verse 26, it says, When the walls of Jericho were broken down, he cast the city. And this is what Joshua said. Cast be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds the city of Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn and set up its gates with his youngest son. And what happened during the reign of Ahab, this is what exactly happened. This man, because there was a lot of evil, to an extent that it created an environment for the city of Jericho to be, to be, to be rebuilt. And he rebuilt at the expense of his firstborn son. And he raised the gates at the expense of his youngest son. He sacrificed while he was rebuilding this city, Bwana Asifiwe. What a way of strengthening altars. 
That was the background. And prophet Elijah comes to the scene. And when he comes to the scene, he proclaims a, dr a drought. He proclaims a fireman, a drought. And he says, that's what he says in uh, verse, verse 1. As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall, sh there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. So prophet Elijah comes in and proclaims a, a drought. And when he proclaims a drought, he sends the servant of God in hiding, in a place where he was able to hide him, by the brook of Cherub, Cherub, and when he was at the brook of Cherub, where the Lord told him to go and hide, the Lord provided for him miraculously. The Lord provided for the servant of God miraculously that he was able to drink from the brook of Jerob and he commanded the ravens to feed him day and night. Day in the, more, in, the day, in the day and the evening. The ravens were commanded to go and take meat and bread to the servant of God. So what can we learn from there before even we talk about the widow of Sarafat? Number one, what we can learn from there is that even if even if Evil increases. Even if evil increased during the time of Ahab, the word of God did not cease. The word of God did not cease even if evil increased. The word of God came to King, to came to Prophet Elijah. Number one. Number two. Even in drought, even in famine. God, God always make divine provision for his servants. God makes miraculous divine provision for his servants. And as such, my message for our preaching today is divine visitation for divine provision. And it happens that when Prophet Elijah was hidden in that place that God instructed him to go. Because he told him, by the word of God, he told me, move and go. And he, took, he went to a certain place. In that place, he was miraculously provided by the Lord. And when, I, when it reminds me of the land that God says it is in the, it, it is in the kingdom of God. There is a land in the kingdom of God, a mysterious land, in the kingdom of God, a land of plenty. And when a prophet Isaiah was in that place, remember, it's still in the territory of the, of the Baal. When, when, when Elijah the prophet was in that place, he was able to access that land. That land that you want us to read. Can we go to Deuteronomy chapter 8? Wanna see fewer? Are we following? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. The presence of God is here and the environment is charged. Let us go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 7 to 10. There is a land that, Ahab, uh, uh, that prophet uh, Elijah was able to access. And this is the promise that the Lord gave to the children of Israel from verse 7. Chapter 8, Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees, and that one, can you somebody pronounce for me that one? My Hallelujah accent, Pomo? Pomo, that one, that one. You know the fruit? That fruit. Pomo, great is you. A land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity in which you will make, you lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of those hills you can dig copper. Hallelujah. When you have eaten and are full, when you say, you, then, then you shall say, you, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. 
There is a land that the Lord has promised us in his kingdom. A land, as the word of God says, a land, hallelujah, verse 7, that uh, bringing you to a, a good land, a land of brooks of water, a land of wheat and barley, a land that bread is there without scarcity, a land whereby there is no lack, hallelujah, and when God hid prophet Elijah during famine in that place where he hid him, he was able to access that land. And he was able to eat. And God provide, miraculously provided for him. So it happens back to our text. Let's go back to our text. So it happened. But after a while, the brook ran dry. And when the brook dried, the word of God came a second time to Elijah. And he commanded him and he instructed him to go to Sarafath. And to go to Sarafath, he'll find a widow who is going to provide unto him. And so he went to Sarafath. And remember Sarafath, and you, when you read the book, when you read clearly in the book, I discovered Sarafath is still, Sarafath was in Sidon, where Elijah got his wife. That means it was a territory of the Baals, Wanasifiwe. That is the place where God instructed Elijah to go, in the very, very territory of Baal. And he told him, you'll go there and you'll find a widow who is going to provide for you, Wanasifiwe. So he went there as instructed by the Lord. He moved and he went there. So, um, so he was instructed, and when he went to the place, he find the widow. And he asked the widow for water to drink and something to eat. And the widow, and the widow um, told the man of God, I have no bread to offer you. I only have a handful of flour and a very little oil in the jar. That is what is left of us. And as you met us, we were collecting the sticks, not even firewood. They were collecting those sticks, zile mabaki, to go and prepare a meal for, the, for, the, for, the, for, 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 for herself and the son so that they can eat and die. Are we together? Thank you for the Sunday school. We bless our children. So, um, so he tells him. So she tells she tells uh, Prophet Elijah that what I'm left is just a handful, a handful of flour and very little oil. Remember, we are. It's, it's, it's a time of famine. It's a time of economic crisis. And the man of God tells him, "Do not fear. Do not fear." Go as you have said. Go and prepare the meal. But first, bring a cake, prepare first a cake for me and bring to me that I may eat. Then prepare the rest and eat with your, with your son. Hallelujah. And he prophesied to the widow. And this is what the Lord says. Verse 14. For there says the Lord God of Israel, after he had spoken to the, to the, to the widow, for there says the Lord of God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So he prophesied. Even before she went and prepared, he, pro she prof he prophesied to her that take note that the flour the jar, of the, the bin of flour will not run dry. And the oil will not dry. Says the, says the Lord God Almighty. Now I have just come to speak to a few people. Here. The word of God, as it comes, it's speaking to some people here. Few or some. Those who are here and those who are listening to me or watching in the, in, the, in, the, in the 
channel. I want to speak to you today that during this economic crisis that we are facing as a nation, like the, the, like the widow of Zarafat, you have no idea where your next meal will come from. Like the widow of Zarafat, you have no idea why your next business opportunity is coming from. Like the widow of Zarafat, you have no idea where your, job, your next job opportunity is coming. You have no idea. You have no idea when the next opening is coming. And when you look at yourself and you look at your situation, all you have is a handful of flour and a very little oil in your jar. But I've come to tell you this. Regardless of the situation, hallelujah, that this is what the Lord says, and this is what the Lord wants you to know, that God is a God of mercy, that God's mercies are abundant towards you, that even in this situation, that God's mercies are abundant towards you, that in the midst of economic crisis, he's able to meet you at the hour of your need. So, as the prophet told the widow in Sarafat, do not fear. So the Lord is telling us today, do not fear. Even in this economic crisis, when you're looking at your handful of flour and the little oil in your jar, and you know it is not enough to sustain your family, the Lord is saying, do not fear. Just like the psalmist said in, in Psalms chapter 37, verse 25, that I have been, oh, I have been young. And I'm telling you that because I'm old. I have been young and I have been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants, his children begging for bread. And when you turn to the word of, or, or, uh, when you turn to the Deuteronomy, when God was blessing the children of Israel, he included in his blessings, Deuteronomy chapter, let me just read, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 5. Don't have to go there, but you can write. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 5. When God was blessing the, ch his, the children of Israel, this is one of the blessings that caught my eyes. He says, God blessed his people and said, blessed shall be thy basket, and blessed shall be their kneading bowl. Bowl. Blessed shall be your basket, and blessed shall be your kneading bowl. The basket is what carries your provision. The basket is what carries your job. The basket is what carries your business opportunities. The basket is what carries your ministry. The basket is what carries your provision. And the kneading bowl. Mnajua kneading bowl. Wamama. Mnajua hiyo karaya ya kutengeneza inaituanje? You know your career yako ya nyumbani ya kutengeneza chapati when you want to knead the bowl. He says that he will bless your kneading bowl. Ila unatengeneza mkate. Bwana sifiwe. Your daily bread, your provision. God says he will bless your kneading bowl. Hallelujah. And I want to prophesy according to the word of God as it comes. I want to prophesy to us. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. The bin of flour will not be used up. Hallelujah. Nor shall the jar, jar of oil run dry in Jesus' name. Those who are receiving that word receive in Jesus' name. That the flour, that your, 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 that your, 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 the bin of flour, your bin of flour will not be used up. Hallelujah. Your jar of oil will not be dried up. Bwana sifiwe. Until God sends rain on earth. Bwana sifiwe. Even in this economic crisis, the Lord is telling us, do not fear. Hallelujah. He's, he's saying he's releasing his masses. And he says that his system of help, he's an eternal God. His help does not come to an end. Bwana sifiwe. His provision does not come to an end because he's called eternal God, Jehovah Elohim. He does not come to an end. His help does not come to an end. His mercy does not come to an end. His help does not come to an end. Oh God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. May God bless your basket and your kneading bowl in Jesus' name. May God bless our baskets and our kneading bowl in Jesus' name. They will not dry in Jesus' name. Even in this economic crisis, by the mercies of God, until the rain comes, it will not dry up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Some lessons from us as we learn the book from the, this, this text. We do not know much about, back to the widow of Zarephath. We do not know much about the widow of Zarephath. What we know that she, number one, what we know that she didn't have, she didn't have any food to spare. She didn't have any food to spare. Even right now, when you look at our situations, at times we don't have any food to spare. I don't know whether you are, you, you, you are, you are enlisted in some of this WhatsApp group. Like now I'm in like four WhatsApp group of, of friends and relatives who are seeking for financial appeal because they have lost their own. At times you look at those and you say, God, my God have mercy. So when you look at your situation, you feel like, like the widow of Sarafat, you do not have something to spare. What we learn from this womb, the widow, we don't know much about him, but what we know is that he didn't have food to spare. And she, and she was planning to eat her last meal. That this widow, what we know about her, that she was planning to eat her last meal, to gather what she's able to gather and eat her last meal. Because she had come to the end of herself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what we, also what we know about this widow of Zarephath, and what I can allude to is that why did God choose to go to this woman, to, to, to visit this, this widow of Zarephath? There were many, many, many widows in Zarephath. But God chose the widow of Zarephath. We do not know even her name. Hallelujah. We do not even know her name. But God chose this woman of Zarephath. And he said that he's going to do what? To visit him. There were many, many other widows in Zarephath, but God chose this woman, God chose this widow, and said that I've chosen you, I have chosen you, and I'm going to visit you. So why did God choose the widow of Zarephath? God chose the widow of Zarephath and commanded her that I'm commanding you to provide to my servant. And the reason I believe why God chose the woman of Zarephath, this is just my analysis. The reason why I think God chose this woman of Zarephath is because she had an obedient heart. She had an obedient heart because God commanded her to go and feed the prophet. And during the famine, you know, during the famine, you know, she didn't have much, but God commanded her. So what I can learn from her that she had a heart of obedience to hear the voice of God. And to heed the voice of God. Hallelujah. And the other thing about this woman I'm learning is that she had a heart to give. She had a giving heart. That even in the, in the, in the, in the, in the midst of her situation, even in the, in the midst of her need, she was willing to sacrifice and give to the servant of God. All that she had. She said, okay, this is what God is telling me. This is what God is telling me to do. So what she said, she said, this is all I have. But she decided that she's going to sacrifice. And the other thing that I know about this woman, when I look at the situation in the background, is that, is that he trusted God to provide for her. Even in the farm mine. He trusted God to provide for her. Can you believe he, she was living at a time whereby everybody, you know, because they were worshipping Baal. And there was a, a, a whole altar where people were worshipping Baal. But this woman decided that she's going to trust God to provide for her. Even when the children of Israel, they were turning their hearts to Baal, to worship Baal, so that Baal will provide for them in the famine. Hallelujah. But this woman chose, no, me, I will trust my God. I will trust my God to provide for me. Even if, even if I, I come to the end of myself, I would rather die 
than go and serve Baal. Bwana asifiwe. I would rather die than trust Baal to provide for me. Bwana asifiwe. So what I can learn from her is that she trusted God even when others were trusting in gods, other gods, even when others turned their hearts to trust to other gods and idols to provide for them. This woman of Zarephath clung to God and trusted in God that she would rather die in the hands of God than to go to Baal and be provided for. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. So what, what, what can we also learn from Prophet Elijah? There are three things that we can learn from Prophet Elijah. That even as evil increases, one has a few, that's what we have learning. That even as evil increases, that the, the word of God does not cease to speak, one has a few. That when Elijah moved at the instruction of God, because God instructed him, the fireman, the fireman had set in, and God instructed Elijah, move, go, when he heeded the voice of God, the instruction of God to move, where he was instructed to go, that is where the, 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 the divine provision manifested. If he had not heeded to the voice of God to move and stayed in farmer in the, in the, in the, in the land of farmer, something would have happened. He would not have experienced his miracle. He would not have accessed the land of plenty. In the kingdom of God, there is that land of plenty plenty that we can only access when we follow when we boy obey God and when God we follow God fully and follow instructions one as if he were. so when Elijah decided and he followed the instructions of of God to move to relocate to go to other to another site where God was able to hide him one as if he were. and what we can learn from the from this scripture is that God even in even in times of hardship even in times of famine, even in times of drought, God is able to hide their servants. Bwana Sifiwe. God is able to hide us even during the, the during that times. Bwana Sifiwe. Hallelujah. Are we together? And what we can learn from Elijah is that when one source of supply is drying up, God is well able. He is assured of another of another means. Bwana Sifiwe. That when one when one source one source when one source dries up, one as if you were, just like when the, uh, the brook of Jerab dried up, one as if you were, God was able to make divine provision for his servant, one as if you were. So when one source dries up, do not fear, one as if you were. God is in own divine nature. He's able to make other provisions for you, one as if you were. That even during these hard, uh, hardship times, God is able to hide you, one as if you were. God is able to miraculously provide for you, one as if you were. Hallelujah. Are we together? Are we together? And the other thing that I was learning from the, the whole story of Zarephath and Elijah is that it doesn't matter where you stay. It doesn't matter the territory where you are. Why? Because uh, uh, Elijah was told to go to the very, very territory of Baal, where there is worship of Baal. But in that territory, God was able, able to to, to, to connect him and to, to connect him with the, with the land that is flowing with plenty and to provide miraculously for him. Hallelujah. Are we together? So what does that mean for us? We, know we have learned lessons from Elijah and, and, and the widow of Zarephath. What does it mean to us? Hallelujah. What does it mean to us? You know, just like the, the way God chose the widow of Sarafat, Bwana Sifiwe. We are God's chosen people. Hallelujah. God has chosen me. God has chosen you. We are God's chosen people according to the word of God. Bwana Sifiwe. And we are marked for God's divine provision because God has chosen us. Hallelujah. Because we are the chosen people. God has marked us for divine provision. That even during this, during this economic crisis, during these hard times, we have divine sufficiency with our Lord. That God is our sufficiency. That Jehovah is Jehovah El Shaddai, an all-sufficient God. He's able to provide unto us. Because of, he's able to provide us according to his riches in glory. So he is our divine sufficiency. That even during this economic uh, turbulence, that God is still visiting his people. God is still visiting his people. And there is divine visitation for divine 
provision. Bwana asifiwe. There is divine visitation for divine provision during this time. That God is at work. God is choosing people to visit. May you be found among the people God has chosen. Bwana asifiwe. May you be found and may you be found among the people that God has chosen. Divine visitation to visit you divinely. Bwana asifiwe. I always remember what uh, uh, our elder, our elder uh, Peter, he ministered one day and said that there are people here that before the end of the year, God will surprise them. Bwana asifiwe. God is going to catapult their life to a place where that God is going to shock them. Bwana asifiwe. So can you be counted among those who God is going to visit? Bwana asifiwe. Can you be counted among those God is going to visit? Bwana asifiwe. Can you say, Lord, I want to be among the number? Bwana asifiwe. I want to trust you for divine visitation, for divine provision during this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you just say, Lord, I want to be part of what you're doing? Bwana asifiwe. I want to be a partaker of what you're doing? Bwana asifiwe. Position me, my God. Position me so that I can partake of what you are doing, Bana Sifiwe. So that I can be a part and parcel of what you are doing, Bana Sifiwe. So that I don't miss your divine visitation, Bana Sifiwe. Because remember, there were many widows in Sarafat, Bana Sifiwe, but God chose the widow of Sarafat, Bana Sifiwe. So we are many here, Bana Sifiwe. We are many here, but God is choosing, God is choosing, God is choosing. He wants to visit each and every one of us because He's not a respecter of persons, but He wants to find you. Are you in a position? that he can visit you, Bwana Asifiwe. Are you in a position that he can provide for you divine provision, Bwana Asifiwe? Hallelujah. And I want to connect this message with what, what, with what Pastor preached, preached on Sunday. I want to connect this message with what Pastor preached on Sunday. And, we, we, we are, we, and the word of God is telling us that we are chosen. We are a chosen people. We are a chosen people. And God is saying that he's going to provide for us. Bwana Sifiwe. God is saying that he's going to provide for us. And I just want to remind ourselves the message that pastor preached on Sunday. Because I went home and I made sure during my, my evening devotion, I sat my children down and I told them, do you know we were making a covenant? Bwana Sifiwe. Do you know we were making a covenant on Sunday? Because God was telling us, choose today. Bwana Sifiwe. I have set before you life and death, Bwana Sifiwe. I have set before you blessing and a curse, Bwana Sifiwe. But choose life, Bwana Sifiwe. Choose life that you may live, you and your descendants, Bwana Sifiwe. That you may live, Bwana Sifiwe. And I was telling them, we have to be, we have to, we have to agree with God's covenant, Bwana Sifiwe, that we are choosing life, that you may live, Bwana Sifiwe. That we are choosing blessings over curses in the name of Jesus Christ. That we are choosing life over death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We shall live in this economic crisis, Bwana Sifiwe. And God is going to provide for us, Bwana Sifiwe. And there's, there are conditions. I remember Pastor mentioned to us some conditions which I want to link with this message for today. He said that there are three conditions that you must love God, Bwana Sifiwe. That you, the first condition that the children of Israel were told, that is, in, if you are not here last Sunday, it was in Deuteronomy chapter 30. You missed if you are not here on Sunday. That you are being told that there are conditions, Bwana Sifiwe, that you must love the Lord your God, Bwana Sifiwe. The first condition is to love God, Bwana Sifiwe. The second condition is to obey his voice. Hallelujah. Just like the widow of Zarephath, what did he do? What did she do? She obeyed the voice of God. So there is, some, there is a part for you to play. Because God is a covenant-keeping God. To a covenant-keeping people. There is a part for you to play. Number one, he told us that you must love God. That you must obey his voice. You must be a people that are ready to obey his voice. To obey his instructions. To obey his statutes to obey his commands. Hallelujah. Bwana Sifiwe. The other thing I remember that he, he mentioned, a condition. The third condition he said that it is, you have to, you have to cling to this God. Bwana Sifiwe. That you have to cling to this God. You have to be firmly committed to this God. Bwana Sifiwe. You know to cling. Bwana Sifiwe. Just like a young car, you know, like a, a, a young child. Unaona mtoto mdogo vile na katalianga mama yake kwa mugu. Ana cling. Hallelujah. These are times we need to cling to God. Hallelujah. 
These are times where we need to be firmly committed to God. Useme Mungu ate iwe ivipi, ate vile liwe liwalo, mimi Mungu sikuachi. Bwana asiwe asifiwe. Liwe liwalo. Mimi I am clinging to you. Bwana asifiwe. I am firmly committed to you. Sikuachi. Bwana asifiwe. And your miracle will come. Bwana asifiwe. Because he promised them that when you do that, hallelujah, he will prolong read it in Deuteronomy that chapter 30. I went back home and I I read that work and I said that word is from that is a, 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 a commandment. Bwana asifiwe. That is a covenant. When I see few, the third thing, hallelujah, to be committed, when I see few, and he promised in that word, go and read, he promised that he's going to prolong your, your days, hallelujah, and he's going to lead you to a land of plenty, when I see few, he will lead you to a land of plenty, that means in the kingdom of God, in our kingdom, the kingdom of God, there is a land of plenty in the spiritual realm that God gives us access. But they are conditions. As God is telling us he's merciful and he's come to bless us and he's ready to visit us for divine provisions. There is a land, a land that is full of brooks of water, a land that is full of bread. Yo, mouth, matunda inaitu aja program, pro, yo, pro, pro, yo, yo, that fruit. Yes, I know it, I, I can see it, but yo, the lawyer in me cannot pronounce it. Bwana asifiwe. Those are, that's a land that is flowing with fruits. Bwana asifiwe. And it is for us to access. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. So in conclusion, I want to conclude with this word, because my time is almost up. Uh, up. Uh, this word is found in Luke. We'll not read it, but we, we, can, we can go back and read it. Um, Luke chapter 9, that is my concluding verse. Are we together? Yes. Luke chapter 9, from verse 28 to 36. I will not read because of time, but please... When you find time, go and read that scripture. And this is what I have to say about it. Eh? Um, this was a time that Jesus had gone up to the mountain to pray. Uh, I can't remember the name of the mountain very well, but there's a certain mountain. Uh, you can go and read and find out for yourself which mountain. I'm not very sure which mountain, but there's a mountain that Jesus went up to pray. And when we went up to pray to that mountain, Amongst his disciples, he picked uh, uh, he picked the inner circle. There is, you know, he had disciples, but there was that inner circle. He picked disciples from his inner circle. He picked James. It was James, uh, I think Peter, James, and John. And they went to the mountain. And when we went to, we went to that mountain, we call it the mountain of transfiguration. The mountain of transfiguration. Then in the midst of his disciples, James, Peter, and John, I think it was James, Peter, and John, suddenly, suddenly there was a change. Jesus was transfigured. In that mountain, Jesus was transfigured. And he was revealed. His glory was revealed as a son of God. The glory, his glory as a son of God. His glory as a son of God was revealed with an overpowering, overwhelming, outpouring light and splendor. In that very mountain of trans transfiguration, Jesus was transfigured before his, the three disciples. And he was revealed that moment, that very, very moment, suddenly. He, his glory... The glory, the glory of Jesus as the son of God was revealed with so much outpouring and uh, overwhelming and, uh, you know, the splendor in light and splendor was disfigured before the disciples. And what happened? Two characters appeared. Two characters appeared. Moses and Elijah. 
Moses and Elijah appeared and Jesus talked to them. You know, in that, I don't know whether it was a vision. Moses and Elijah appeared and Jesus was talking to them. That moment, that instant, God was fulfilling his plan of salvation. Jesus was fully was fulfilling the entire Old Testament. For him to be seen with Elijah, Elijah, talking to Elijah, talking to Moses. You know, Moses stood there and represented the law. Elijah stood there and presented the prophets. So before the eyes of the disciple, the, 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 the whole purpose, plan of God, of salvation was being fulfilled. And it was being revealed to him that Jesus is fulfilling the entire Old Testament. So Jesus Christ, as we know him, our Redeemer, he says, let's, let's go to, the, to, to John chapter 6, verse 35, as I conclude. John chapter 6, verse, 30, uh, John chapter 6, verse 35. I'm concluding with that word. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, is the bread of life, fountain of life. And this is what he says. Hallelujah. I am the bread. Are we there? I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And who, he belie who believes in me shall never thirst. Remember what we read in the, about the widow of Sarafath. He had only a handful of flour and the oil a little oil in his jar, in her jar. The little, the oil represents the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the carrier of our basket, and today we are learning about Jesus fulfilling the prophets and the law, and we are being told our Redeemer who liveth, he says, I am the bread of life, who comes to me shall never hunger, who believes in me shall never thirst, so, what the Lord is telling us today, that our Lord Jesus Christ is willing, is more than willing to visit us for divine provision during this time. But even in our need, the Lord is looking and seeing, even in our need, what are you willing to spare? Yes, we are living in economic times. We are living in times hard hard times, hardship times, and the Lord is willing to visit us. The Lord is willing to give, to provide to us miraculously. The Lord is willing to access to us that land, that land in the kingdom of God, where there is no scarcity. It is it, they, where there is plenty and there is no scarcity that is preserved for you and I. But the Lord is saying, in your need, he's coming and he's willing to visit you. But he's asking, what are you willing to spare? Like the widow of Zarephath, what are you willing to spare? Can you spare your time? Are you willing to spare your time and fellowship with the Lord Jesus? Because he's the bread of life. You'll never thirst. You'll never go hungry. Are we willing to spare our time in the, in the midst of our busy schedules? What are you willing to, are you willing to spare? Time with our Lord Jesus Christ. What are you willing to spare? Can you spare time to serve the Lord? Against all odds. Against all odds. Are you willing to spare your time and serve the Lord? In the midst of these times, the crisis that you are living in, yes, the Lord is willing to come and provide miraculously. But the Lord is waiting and seeing are you willing in your need to supply to his needs? Are you willing to spare? To spare when he says give. When the Lord says give. When the Lord says give. Are you willing to spare what you have and give to his service? Are you willing to sacrifice? This is my, this is my concluding concluding. As I conclude, when I see, <laughs> this is my concluding, concluding, now the conclusion. 
Hallelujah. We are entering into a very divine season. And as we read in the morning that God, God is a God of times and season. And this is a, the season is ripe for us. We are just entering into the season of the Passover, Easter season. It is a ripe season. A season that you can tap into. Tap into. Tap to into. Because I believe this, this divine season of Easter, the Lord wants to provide miraculously. The Lord wants to visit some of you here and provide you miraculously and meet you at the hour of need. So as can, can we prepare our hearts? Can we open our doors to our hearts? Can we be free and open our doors and see? You never know. You never know what God will ask you to spare. You never know what God will ask you to do. You never know what God is asking you to spare. When you spare that, it might be the moment for you to receive your miraculous. So as we enter into this Passover season, the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, he is visiting people. He is visiting people. May we tap and may we be able even to be part and pursue what he is doing. Can we rise on our seat as we, I hand over the mic to Pastor and sing this one more song. Vizazi, Hadi, Vizazi, Had, Vizazi, Hadi, Vizazi, Isaac, as I hand over the mic to Pastor to conclude for us. God bless you. May the Lord, may the, may the Lord, name of